Okay, Rob, thanks a lot. It's the U.S. looking pretty good at the buildup to the Gold Cup coming up a little bit later this week, and the Americans on top of China 2-1. to one. We got a lot more to come on our halftime report after a performance for the ages. LeBron trying to get the Cavs into the NBA Finals. Bex is back. MLS in his sight. Show you how he did for England. And the Rockets launch delayed. We'll tell you why next. This halftime report is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. This is the Sports Center halftime report. Presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Back on the Sports Center halftime report, Benny Failhaber getting the second goal for the Americans. They are on top of China, two to one. Plenty to dance about at the half in San Jose. We'll get you a little bit more soccer in just a bit, but want to catch you up on everything else going on. And that starts with the basketball tonight. Eastern Conference Finals, LeBron and company trying to finish off the Pistons. James coming off that 48-point performance in Game 5. Right now, though, he's been content just to give it up most of the way. The Pistons started off hot, up 6-0 in this game. Billups hitting a 3 for Detroit. 19-15 at that point. It's 2019 in favor of the Cavaliers. Just two points to this point for LeBron. Well, Roger Clemens saw the hype, all the buildup. Turns out he won't make that Monday start after all. Clemens scratched due to a groin injury, not believed to be serious. Unclear when Clemens will be ready to pitch. David Beckham back playing for England on Friday, making his presence felt, set up. England's lone goal in its draw with Brazil off the free kick here. John Terry putting it home. Beckham, of course, set to join MLS's LA Galaxy later this summer. England ended up drawing with Brazil 1-1. Well, speaking of MLS, expansion Toronto playing well after a slow start. Top the Rapids 2-1. First place New York and KC in action. Red Bulls on top. One to nothing at the half, and Real Salt Lake still looking for that elusive first win, scoreless with New England as they play in the second. BC United, LA Galaxy later tonight. The European qualifying today, crazy match. Sweden and Denmark. Spot shadow here shows us Christian Polson appearing to punch Marcus Rosenberg in the midsection. This after Denmark had fought back from three nothing down to tie it at three. Polson is sent off, red card, and then a Danish fan charges out of the stands, tries to go after the ref. The linesman walked off the field, still 3-3, pending a UEFA decision. Well, we've got Julie Foudy coming up next as we head back out to San Jose. She'll get us ready for the Women's World Cup. That's next. This halftime report is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. Welcome you back to San Jose in the Dick's Sporting Goods Halftime Report. At the break, the United States on top of China 2-1. to one. This summer, starting September 10th, China will host the 2007 Women's World Cup. Joining us now, ESPN soccer analyst, four-time Women's World Cup bet. She only won two of them, slacker. Julie Foudy joins us right now. And if we're talking to World Cup, Julie, contractually, we are obligated to say that there is a group of death. And that group of death Mandated. appears to be Group B, the one that the United States just happens to be in. Mm -hmm. Who's the one key player in your mind that has to excel for them to get out of that group and move on to the late stages? Well, actually, every country is going to be gunning after Abby Wambach and marking her because she's been scoring so many goals. But actually, I think the critical person for the United States is number 13, the captain, Christine Lilly. Playing in her fifth World Cup, Abby's going to draw a lot of attention like Mia did in prior World Cup, so it's going to be necessary that Christine finishes and she finishes often to take the pressure off the United States. And for the third consecutive Women's World Cup, the United States will take on North Korea and Nigeria. But you think the team to really worry about Sweden? Sweden, it, but North Korea has been very good. They're under 20s, just won the Women's World Cup. Sweden, however, has been excellent because of one player I've always really admired, Hanna Lundberg. She's a forward for Sweden. She's a great finisher. The problem is she's been injured a lot. So can she stay healthy? The news right now from Sweden is she's back 100%, which is a great sign for Sweden in this World Cup. In the quarterfinals, the winner of Group B will meet the runner-up of Group A. 
which means if the United States, you want to avoid Germany. You do want to avoid Germany, although Germany finished in last place in March in the big Algarve Cup in Portugal. However, their big player, Birgit Prince, who is their star forward, again, a great goal scorer like Lundberg in Sweden, she's been back in form, just scored four goals in two Olympic, sorry, European qualifiers. So if there's a group of death, there also has to be a group of Light. Light, for lack of a better term. Hello, Group C. You are the lack of light with maybe one really strong team from Norway coming out of it. Well, well, Norway is very happy to be in this group, although Canada has shown some promise in past World Cups. I'm not taking them this World Cup. I'm taking Australia. Tommy Sermani is the new coach for Australia, so Norway and Australia are my two coming out of Group C. And the U.S. faces Norway July 14th in East Hartford, Connecticut. Group D, if you are the host country for any World Cup, men's or women's, you automatically have home field advantage, which is mammoth for a tournament like that. That is going to be a big boost for China. Big boost for China. And the other one, obviously, out of this group is Brazil. Even though after they played the United States in the final of the Olympics, they took two years off, they still have Marta, the 21-year-old 20 sensation. She is phenomenal. Just a great goal scorer. She's their engine. She's a playmaker. She is always on the ball. She's going to take them out of that group. And next up for the U.S. women, June 16th in Cleveland, they take on China. Every single game can be seen live at the 2007 FIFA Women's World Cup on ESPN, ESPN2, beginning September 10th, running through September 30th. Julie, thanks for joining us, and stick around. We're going to have you hang with us here in the second half. But when we return, first half highlights and the second half kick. This has been the Dick Sporting Goods Halftime Report. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of U.S. soccer presented by the United States Marine Corps. One sub at the break for the U.S. Casey Keller will be making his 98th international appearance for the United States. Tim Howard goes to the bench as we take a look at the first half highlights in our Panasonic game shots. Yeah, the theme was the perfect pass and they, it came first for Beasley. Gets in on, in on goal, gets taken out, finds the back of that. There were some kind of squirrely moments for the U.S. Yang gets the goal here. Bad defense by the United States, but it was the same theme again. Another little touch pass in behind Benny Phil. However, a thousand things are going through his brain just before he hits this ball. That collision with the goalkeeper had to hurt, but when you get a goal and it's your first, you forget about everything else. Say hi to your, your folks. They're in the crowd. 